Rubies are among the most sought after gemstones in the world. With resources becoming scarce, prices have been rising for years. This is really expensive material, tens of thousands of dollars per gram. More than half now come from northern Mozambique, a region plagued by poverty and violence. Check this community here. No hospital. People suffer like that. You see, this not a development. Can the lucrative ruby business change that? The road leading to the world's largest ruby mine runs through a crisis zone. This is Cabo Delgado province, one of the poorest parts of Mozambique. Thousands of people are trying to get a ride so they can flee. Because in recent weeks, Islamists attacked several villages, beheading people and setting fire to their homes. The ruby mine is also on heightened alert. The attacks are getting closer. And the violence is only one of the problems facing the security team. Let the boys get in and let's start blocking the routes again. Please, because these kids are just coming to make trouble. In the morning, security chief Frank Brins and his team plan the day ahead. So you better talk to the guys, they're going to feel safe. Meanwhile, a few hundred meters away, another struggle is beginning. Every day, up to 200 people illegally enter the open cast mine, hoping to share in the region's mineral wealth. Using simple tools, they dig tunnels up to 15 meters deep. The mine uses drone pilots to track the illegal mining, coordinating with the security team. Keep going. OK, here. Stop. This time, only one of the men is caught. Easy there. Are you going to cry? You look like a child. The young man knows what awaits him. He'll go straight to jail and could face a sentence of up to five years. This isn't the first time he's been caught. He's already spent two years in prison. Please. I have a four-year-old daughter and a wife. And a child. Okay. You feel sorry for these guys because if you look at the if you look at the area they're moving, I mean, yes, there is a mine here. Yes, we, we can only accommodate so many people in terms of employment. You can't uh, give employment to everyone. Just in this uh, vicinities of our mine, we're looking at about 80,000 displaced people uh, from Montepias up to Nanjua. What do, what do that people do for an income? They, they get involved in this. Most of the mine work is done using machines. Every day, excavators remove 3,000 tons of ore. The ore runs along conveyor belts to be washed and crushed. Only at the end of the process are the precious rubies visible to a few human sorters walking under strict conditions. Every employee is thoroughly searched when leaving the mine. 1,400 people work here, one in three of them in the security team. We want to find the family of the man who was arrested for illegal mining. In a village in the middle of the mine concession, we meet his sister. We ask if she knows what happened to her brother. He called me to say they'd taken him into custody. I haven't heard from him since. How do I feel? What can I say? I don't even have money for the bus to go visit him let alone to help him. Just next door, a group of young men has gathered. At first, the mood is tense. It's clear what most of them do for a living. But they still want to talk to us. They blame the mine for their situation. They say that none of them got a job there. 
We're suffering here. There's no work. I have no choice but to search for rubies. And it's not lucrative either. I just came back from digging 10 shafts and I found nothing. But they still hunt us down and arrest us, even when we don't have anything. In recent years, the mine has been accused of severe human rights violations. Security forces abusing those doing illegal mining and sometimes burying them alive. Now the administrators say they want to do things differently, working more closely with the people and operating with more transparency. Complaint boxes have been set up. The company shows off its social projects, farms, mobile health clinics and schools. But above all, it pays plenty of taxes, says the mine manager Claudius Nongonema. Upwards of 25% of our gross revenues um, have been to the, paid to the government in terms of um, the production taxes and royalties. And um, that's a significant amount of money and uh, we do not know at this point, uh, a, gemstone com uh, a gemstone company anywhere in the world that has contributed back to the host government such um, amounts of money as a percentage of their gross revenue. And this is where the rubies are turned into profit, Thailand. The country is one of the most important gemstone trading centers. The world's largest ruby auction takes place regularly in the capital, Bangkok. This time, 122 kilograms of rubies are being auctioned, more than 600,000 carats. It's the yield from the last six months, all from a single mine in Mozambique. Number 52. You can certainly see the difference in tone. The more red the gemstone, so I could almost say like a, a, a traffic sign, stop sign, red, very vivid, very bright, transparent, would be the best uh, color ruby. As they get darker, while still beautiful, they do become less valuable. Adrian Banks has worked in the gemstone industry for more than 20 years. For half a year, the South African travels the world as sales director of the company Gemfields. Ruby prices have risen sharply in recent years and Banks hopes the trend will continue. I think tomorrow, when auction time comes, this will be one of the most sought after parcels. This is really expensive material. Uh, tens of thousands of dollars per gram. After a thorough inspection, customers bid on various items. Since the pandemic, the auction has been held online. 80% of bidders come from within Thailand. The local ruby reserves are as good as exhausted, but the industry still has decades of experience in cutting and polishing the gems. <laughs> Okay. In the past, we have to go to the mine, we have to go to other country to find the material. Like for example, if we go to Africa, to the local miner, we're going to end up buying very little in the quality we need. But with the auction, we can choose what we want in quantity. The next day, the inspection is over. It's crunch time. This is live. And this is going to close um, at 2 o'clock Bangkok time, which is in 17 minutes' time. Then everyone will be aware of what the total revenue is. And all the revenue from the auction, every single dollar, gets uh, repatriated to uh, Montepoeus Ruby Mining in Mozambique. And the government has full uh, transparency on the amount uh, and the proceeds from the auction. And the relevant taxes are then paid on, on that. Welcome to all of you and every good wish for the three auctions that will be closing today. The auction has now uh, just closed. Uh, the end of the auction is monitored by government officials and the Mozambique tax authorities. There's a transparency that's rare in the gemstone mining industry. We are not allowed to film the announcement of individual sales, but overall a new record has been set. The auction brings in almost 100 million dollars. 
It's a windfall for the company and state coffers. But how much of that will reach the people? Mozambique's government is not known for transparency or good governance. According to the constitution, 2.75% of the tax revenues must flow back into the region. But there's little sign of it. Back in the provincial capital, a government representative shows us a list of projects and asks for patience. There is poverty after independence. Countries don't become rich in 50 years. But there are steps being taken. In the past, this district wasn't like it is today. We didn't have the health facilities that we have now. In the villages around the mine, there are classrooms for the school children. There is growth happening. But I don't believe anyone expects us to become rich overnight with all these resources. The mine manager argues that the people will benefit from the mine in the long term. But he's also surprisingly honest and self-critical about the situation. One can understand why they are not happy. Uh, you, you know, uh, if you look at all the, um, the, the, the their social life, schools, uh, education, uh, infrastructure, and, um, uh, and uh, health and the like. At the moment, I think um, what um, uh, we are doing collectively uh, as private organizations and as the government is still really a drop in the ocean. Here in Mozambique, poverty and the lack of prospects are plain to see. Some who don't try to get their hands on rubies rely on catching mice to feed their families. And there isn't much time left for the region's poorest to get some benefit from the gemstone wealth. In as little as 10 years, the ruby reserves here could be exhausted.